Do you remember what we just said? Yes. Yeah. We have to give permission that we're being recorded. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are we? Recording? I give permission. I give you all permission to record me and to do with this recording what you I Captain. All right, DIY. Uh, DIY, do it yourself. We're not telling you to do it yourself. We're teaching you how to do, do it, it yourself. yourself. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic and the kids are also yelling at us so it's real life real life real DIY life. real life all right so we have fabulous DIYers here with us tonight we have the beautiful Rachel Sirota aka the ninja as we call her and the reason why we call her the ninja I think Liz really did start it we call her the ninja because when we first started with doTERRA about six years ago, we would ask her a question and it would be like, do, 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 boom. And then she, it was like, we didn't even type it. And it was there. The answer was there. We were like, this lady's a ninja. And that is why we call her the ninja. So without further ado, the beautiful Rachel Sorota is going to take us into sunscreen land yeah. with oils. Did you like how I did that theatrical thing as I came back into the picture? Very theatrical. Exactly. So that was very fancy. I liked your, your entrance. Very you need to add music next time. I'll try to work that in to our technological <laughs> repertoire. Yay. You know, take All it right. Let's, I'm ready look at Trisha with her cool shades. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right all right let's do this so first before we like jump in to how to make this let's talk a little bit about a lot of the sunscreen sunblock that you might find if you walked into like Walgreens or CVS what do you guys know about that sunscreen Oh, um, giving it a thumbs down and sticking out her tongue. Anyone else have insight? Oh, look, Tanya's on a movie screen. <laughs> what do you guys think? So sunscreen, the traditional chemical sunscreens are some of the most toxic products that we can put on our bodies. They are filled with all sorts of things that can mess with our hormones, mess with our respiratory system, mess with our cellular health. They're just no good, okay? So we don't wanna be using those. And a lot of the non-toxic sunscreens are really expensive. Have you guys noticed that? So I have three kids and they all go to day camp. And so they go through lots of sunscreen. And so I was, buying these like $15 tubes of sunscreen, three of them, one for each kid. And it was only lasting me like two weeks. So it was like spending $45 every two weeks just on sunscreen for the kids. And I was like, there has got to be a better way. This is ridiculous. So a couple of years ago, I started <coughs> doing some research, looking around the interwebs, and playing around with some different ideas and came up with this sunscreen recipe that works so well. And I can buy all of the ingredients for less than what I was spending in a summer. And they've lasted me like three summers worth. So I'm saving tons and tons of money in the long run. And here's the coolest part, I think, I also add bug repellent oils into my sunscreen. So when the kids put on the sunblock at camp, it doubles as their bug spray. So I don't need to send them with two different things because all you moms know, kids lose things. So the fewer things you send them with, the better, okay? So let's talk about how to make this sunblock. I did the first step before you guys got on because it involved a double boiler. Now, double boiler is one of those words that makes people get all like nervous and think this is complicated. Here's all it is, okay? I took a shallow pan 
and filled it with about an inch of water. Okay, then inside of that, I took this glass bowl and I just put it inside that pan with the water. And then I turned the heat up and the water boiled and it heats up what's in the bowl. It's that simple, you guys. It's nothing fancy. You can use, you know, whatever you got in your kitchen. So inside this bowl that I already heated up and melted, I have, and we're gonna send you these recipes. So don't worry about like trying to write all this down, okay? So I have a half a cup of fractionated coconut oil, a quarter cup of regular coconut oil, the virgin coconut oil, a quarter cup of beeswax, and about two tablespoons of shea butter. I kind of eyeball the shea butter because it comes in this like big block and I kind of just like chop off a chunk and guess that it's about two tablespoons. Now here's one thing that I will say. If you want your sunblock to be more liquidy so that you can put it like into a spray, leave out the beeswax. If you want it to be more solid or you even wanted to make like a sunscreen stick, then do more beeswax. That adjusting that is gonna adjust sort of how liquid versus how solid your final product is gonna be, okay? So when I say about a quarter cup of, of beeswax, that gets you like kind of a lotion-y consistency, um, but you can adjust accordingly, okay? Now, what we've made so far, by the way, would make an amazing DIY lotion base. So if all you did was just this, and then you add your favorite oils, boom, you've made your own lotion, okay? So you could just stop right here. But we're not gonna stop right here. We are gonna turn this into sunblock. And in order to do that, the biggest thing that we need is zinc oxide powder. Okay, so this is like our active ingredient that is going to give us that sun protection. I keep losing my recipe. Okay. So we're gonna do two tablespoons. I gotta stand up, guys. This is really hard sitting on a stool. Okay, that's better. We're gonna do two tablespoons of the powder and we're just gonna stir it in to all those oils, okay? So one. And seriously, you guys, this is the same bag of zinc oxide powder that I bought like three years ago when I first started making this. And it's just now like towards the bottom. So it lasts forever. So yes, as you go to buy this, you may spend a bit on these ingredients, but just know that they are gonna last you for years. You are gonna be able to make so many batches of this sunscreen with these ingredients, okay? So I'm gonna stir in my zinc. Hang on, I'm just admitting somebody. Um, you know what, Liz and Elena, I'm gonna make you co-host so you can monitor the waiting room if people join in late. Okay, I'm gonna stir this in. One thing I will tell you is the zinc likes to settle. So you wanna kind of continuously give this a stir so the zinc doesn't all settle down to the bottom, okay? Now, we add a few other things that have some sun, sun blocking properties. Um, we're just gonna mute everyone there. Okay, so we are going to add a teaspoon of vitamin E oil. I just get this off of Amazon, super easy. This helps make it really moisturizing. So my kids always say that this sunscreen makes their skin so soft. Between the shea butter and the vitamin E, they're totally right. Okay, so we've got a teaspoon of vitamin E oil. Then we're gonna do a teaspoon of red raspberry oil, which if you go perusing all of the natural blogs, I will post where you can buy all the links to buy all of the ingredients, you guys. Um, red raspberry seed oil has some SPF to it. So it's a good addition to that zinc. And then finally, 
we are gonna add our carrot seed oil. So we added one teaspoon of each of those, the vitamin E, the red raspberry, and the carrot seed. I bought all of these off of Amazon until the day that doTERRA carries them all because I'm sure that they would, doTERRA would make a better quality, but we make do with what we can have. Now, here's where the magic happens, of course, is when we add our essential oils. So we want to add oils that are going to be good for the skin. We want to add helichrysum, which is going to be protective against the sun. And then we're going to add our bug repellent oils. I don't think this year at convention, we're going to get like the red raspberry oil, but maybe doTERRA will just make us sunblock. That would be cool. Although I don't know, because this would still probably be cheaper to be perfectly honest. So I'll probably still make my own. So I'm going to do three drops of helichrysum ish. I don't know. I wasn't really counting. That was approximately three drops. I'm going to do three drops of Arborvitae. You guys can discuss how to pronounce that one. I know there's some disagreement there. Does not want to come out. Almost at the bottom of this. You know what I'm going to do? Since we're at the end of the bottle, do you guys ever do this? I'm just going to take the orifice off and just dump in what's left. It was a little bit more than three drops, but be extra bug repellent on this one. Um, we're gonna do three drops of cedarwood. Cedarwood both because it's good for the skin and because it keeps the bugs away. Five drops of peppermint. Yeah, Arborvite is for the bugs. Five drops of lavender. And finally, five drops of Terra Shield. I'm still using up my old one, but you can use the new one too. We make it particularly effective against mosquitoes. Okay, and that is it. We're done, it's that simple. Now we just continue to stir every so often and wait for it to cool and then pour into our containers. And so what I'm going to, I have these cute little containers that my kids take to camp. So I just had them bring it home and we're just going to refill them and send them back to camp. All done. It is that easy. Any questions? I did have a question. Yes, my friend. So with the SPF, mm -hmm. that's the zinc oxide. Mm -hmm. And could you change the SPF? I guess you could. So uh -huh. technically, right, like here's your legal disclaimer. Uh -huh. I'm not telling you what the SPF is on this. I'm not telling you that it's, it's not like legally a sunscreen. That's why I call it a sunblock. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, sun protectant. Um, so you can totally play around with the proportions if you want to. We have just found that this works pretty well. Um, my kids are outside all day, every day, and none of them ever get burned. So, And they're pretty fair also, skin, you would say. And you uh, also Eli and Molly are. Toby is, has got more of an olive complexion. Um, they do reapply uh, midday, so they apply in the morning and then they reapply uh, partway through the day. Okay. My family has super fair skin, Elena, and mm -hmm. it works excellently for us. You can also look up the SPF of those natural oils, like the carrot seed oil, the red raspberry, the I use pomegranate seed oil instead. You, all those oils, you can look up to see what the SPF is of those oils. So you may be able to choose different ones that have a higher level. Yep. Nice. Yep. <clears throat> Wow. Yeah. Makes me, makes me want to try. Even you could do it, Elena. Do you see how there, you dare I say it? <laughs> you know, we really, we are okay at DIY now. We have many things that we make ourselves. We've come a long way in the last seven years. You have. And 
I thought that was fantastic. That was amazing. Um, because it absolutely made it easier to understand. And also, I appreciate mm -hmm. you sharing the word orifice with us with regards to the bottle top. Because Nin Ninja top. in case you were wondering what Ninja that little top. circle thing is called, it is, in fact, an orifice. orifice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to put this, uh, this sunscreen on an adult's face because it is pretty heavy. So the kids' faces are fine, but I don't, I don't put it on my face because it's- I, it, I do put it on mine, but I make mine a little bit more on the liquidy side. So it actually blends in pretty well. Um, I find if you make it thicker, then it leaves you a little bit white. But it protects. So if your goal is really just to stay protected from the sun, then maybe you don't care if you look a little white. Does it clog your pores? Oh, no, that's what I, I wasn't saying the white. I was saying it's too thick for my pores on my face. That, I, I don't oh. care about being white. It's just a little too thick for my face pores. I think it's going to depend on you individually. I don't find it clogged <laughs> mine. But I also only apply it if I'm going to be outside like between noon and three. Otherwise, I tend to not put bother doesn't bother mm -hmm. all right right got it all right he was just asking uh if it was streaky no it's i mean it's hard for me to show you now because it's still hot so it's still like drippy mm. but it you can see just see on the back of my hand you can't see it at all it blends all right. right in okay very interesting. Very cool. Wow. Look how easy that is, guys. Makes your skin soft and it smells amazing. My kids frequently come home and tell me their counselors would like some. And I'm like, well, their counselors can buy their own oils. This is great. <laughs> Make it themselves. Yeah. Love it. Fantastic. All right. Who's up Yay. next? Yay. Thank you, Rachel. Next we okay, have cool. Trisha. We call her our DIY queen, lovingly. Oh my goodness, team. that's right. We Trisha's do. got recipes for just about anything under the sun. All of it. And I have to tell you, over the mm -hmm. years, Trisha has helped me face some of my fears with making things and my domestic competence level. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, you know, obviously. And then I just live vicariously. We're good at talking, you know, and then yeah. we have to get better at doing sometimes. Right. I, so, I get distracted and I even burn toast. That's right, but so we're not burning really toast. DIY anything. We're gonna turn it over to Trisha and she is going to make bath bombs. Which are the bomb, by the way. Wow. Because, oh, should we just tell them the, the bath bomb story that, that happened to you? We Something bought these me. bath bombs, this was a long time ago at the drugstore and put them in the bathtub and Elena got in the bath and she had an instantaneous allergic reaction. That sounds like me. Because of all of the junky chemicals yeah. in those bath bombs. So it's really important to like know what's in your stuff, right? So here, take it away, Trisha. Trisha! If you don't want your stuff to get allergic to it. Anyway, thank you guys, because <laughs> the reason I wanted to start making my own bath bombs was because I was getting a little jealous of all my friends with little girls who were going to Lush and buying the Lush bath bombs. I'm like, oh no, but it's from Lush. I'm like, okay, great. They still have terrible ingredients. Um, so I was set on making my own because I wanted my kids to have fun in the bath too. I wanted them to have bath bombs. Why shouldn't they? So I, I can say confidently, I think that I've perfected this recipe. Uh, other stores actually, the apothecary that used to be in Nyack used my bath bomb recipe because they couldn't figure out how to get that good consistency and they started using my recipe. So but I've also had a lot of people say, I did it just that way. They came out, they just kept oozing out. And I don't know how you do it. And I've tried live demo. So we're going to try it again to show live exactly how I do it. And I'm just going to send you good energy that yours came out the same way. Now, I have some different options that I want to kind of throw out at you because you guys are all on this call a little bit more of an experienced oiler that you might be able to throw some different things into the mix. So I'm gonna show you some options and then you can kind of figure out what recipe you wanna go off. The basic recipe is very easy. One cup of baking soda. Oh my God, this is a killer. One cup of baking soda. Half a cup of Epsom salts, unscented of course. And half a cup of citric acid. Now, a question I usually get is, ooh, citric acid, isn't that gonna burn the skin? Great question. It actually will, if you touch it, and I have with a cut in my hand, it, it does burn. When you mix it with the baking soda, it neutralizes. And that's why it doesn't burn you when it's in the bathtub. 
So no, it does not burn any cuts or anything when it's in the bathtub because the baking soda neutralizes it. So there you go. Um, now, some people like to stop there and like just add their little bit of coconut, fractionated coconut oil and like keep it as clean as can be. I like to have a little fun and put some color into it. Again, totally optional with your comfort zone. Um, some options for color are, let's see if it's gonna come in. Mike, there we go, in front of my face. Mica powder, you can get these on Amazon. They're a little, oops, I've got color all over me already. Look at me, I'm a mess. Um, they come in all little packets. And you would, what, what I do is I mix it into the liquid stuff and then put it in so it's kind of more dispersed. So they have all, all different colors. I mean, they're just beautiful in front of my face. Half a cup D, one cup baking soda, half a cup citric acid, half a cup Epsom salts. Um, so you can use mica powder or you can use um, food coloring, like natural food coloring. I have one here that's a natural food gel, something I think. Um, again, maybe you don't wanna take the chance and stain your tub, totally fine. The bathrooms are still be fun. Um, so now my recipe that I have says one teaspoon of carrier oil. I always made it with fractionated coconut oil. In the last six months, I started experimenting more with some better moisturizing oils. So I, what I've done tonight is I've melted down Nope, it's on my face, there we go. Um, mango butter. So this is again, everything I have here is from Amazon. So this is mango butter. You can also use a little shea butter. I think it's the same one Rachel showed, shea butter. You could use almond oil. I also have some calendula that I put in. So, cause what I found is when I put the bath bomb in and I get out, my skin is so moisturized by using these heavier oils. And I really like that. So about three teaspoons of carrier oil of your choice. So I'm gonna use the mango butter. Uh, I'm gonna put some food coloring in because my kids are used to having color in it. So in my bowl here, I've got my dry ingredients, my Epsom salt, citric acid, and um, baking soda. Well, this is an ugly color. Well, that was silly. This purple's like black. When? Let's see if we can spice it up a little. It could be a Halloween bath bomb. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also want to ask a quick question about the mango butter. Does it smell like mango? It does not. Okay. It does not, but I'm falling in love with it. I use it a lot. I use it for my shower, uh, my bath melts also. Sometimes I just do a melt, not a fizzy. Um, and then I'm going to put a teaspoon of water. I eyeball stuff, guys. Sorry. Um, so key here. I'm mixing the carrier oil, the three teaspoons of carrier oil, and the one teaspoon of water in a separate bowl, mixing that all together. If I just put the water directly into the bowl, the citric acid immediately starts to fizz up. So mix it all here, and then we're going to mix it. Oh, then I got to put my essential oils in. Hello, essential oils. Um, tonight, we're going to make, I'm making adapted bath bombs because they smell amazing. So I put about 10, 15 drops of um, my essential oil. I've done Serenity. Peace was a big hit for teacher gifts. We made blue Peace bath bombs and wrapped them up in cellophane as gifts for teachers. They were fantastic. Um, so, oh God, the adapter smells so good. So then I'm going to pour this into my, now it still is going to fizz up, but at least it's all mixed together. I'm not like adding in the coconut. I'm in. It's all mixed together. So it does start to fizz up and you wanna start mixing immediately. Let me take my blurred background off so you can see better. Okay, oh, there's my camera. So see how it's like fizzing up a little bit? You can hear it too. You wanna to really start mixing that up because it's expanding and we wanna stop the expansion. So there's not enough liquid so that it that it all expands. So once you start mixing it, the dry ingredients around, it stops really expanding, but it's gonna still give you that nice like paste that you want. So it's gonna look dry. You're gonna be like, Trisha, there's no way this is gonna form a nice hard ball. Cause what we're going for, now I don't have a full one. These are like mini ones. Look, hard, like, hear that? 
hard. They're really hard bath bombs. You can see the color. This was a blue one. This is peace. Oh, one of the other options, I forgot, I have another option. If you wanna get really fancy, you can buy yourself some lavender, lavender flower, like flowers there, and you can grind them in a coffee grinder and add them in. So when you, they do it, the lavender kind of floats on the bathtub. If you wanna get fancy, I've done that too. So I'm mixing this. Now this is where the key Trisha part is. As far as molds, I love the metal molds you get on Amazon. See these, these are my big ones. I have all different shapes and sizes though. I have a big starfish. I have hearts. I have little, little ones. These are my favorites, but I also have silicone mold. And now this, yes, this is a doTERRA one. No, I'm sorry, you can't get it. But, but you can get any kind of silicone mold you want. So if there's a fun shape that you find on Amazon, you can use these too. Now, there's some tricks though, because with this, it does start, because there's no way to really pack it in so it doesn't expand out. So what, you, what I do, my trick is when I, Fill these up, I pack them in, pack them in, pack them in. And then I put a plate over it to stop it from expanding up. And that really helps I keep it in the mold. And then I let it sit for 24 hours so that it's really rock solid hard. But, but with these molds, I, oh, sorry, I've got a little bit more in my dish here. These molds, the key is to overstuff them overstuff them. So let me see if I can bring the camera down. It might be easier. Well, those are great shot. My nose and, and my back chins. There you go. Okay. So we're going to overstuff them. So I'm going to scoop and really fill one side, and really fill the other side, kind of scoop them together and then smush them together. Now you're gonna do this several times. See, this isn't even good. See how it closed really easily? We don't want that. We want it to be so hard to squeeze it together. See how overstuffed this is? Now really squeeze it. Squeeze all the excess off. And squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Squeeze that and you kind of get the excess out. And this isn't even, cause I still have movement in here. This isn't even good enough. And you squeeze it together as hard as you can. Let me see if this is gonna work. Okay, let's see if I can get it. Oh, this one's gonna be a good one. See? Now, if I just like really smush it, it's gonna obviously crumble. What I then do is again, uh, you can put it on some parchment paper or on a plate. I usually put it on a plate. Um, and then cover it with, okay, there's my bath bomb. <laughs> Don't move, I said. Uh, there's my bath bomb. Now that's gonna just get really, really hard. And yes, I take them out of the mold immediately. That's what I do. I stuff them and I put them on a plate and then I cover it, you can't see it. Um, and then I cover it with um, saran wrap or something and I let them sit overnight. If you need them quicker, like you can put them in the fridge or freezer, but I like to let them take the time. So I do let them sit overnight. Um, and then you just keep going until you have none left in your mixture. But that step is the key. And I think that's where most people kind of mess up. They don't stuff it enough that it still has air and space to expand. So it's so stuffed in there that that's not going to expand. It may expand a little bit, but it's not going to like flatten it out. But you have to leave it out over, leave it overnight. Yeah, you have to leave. I leave that overnight. I will leave all the bath bomb. Oh, you thought you had to leave it in the mold. No, 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 no. Nope, if it's a mold like this, it doesn't have, you know, yes, definitely have to leave it in this overnight. But the other, the silver ones don't. Questions? That's my tips and tricks for my bath bombs. Love that. Well, that was yeah. exciting. You so know, those are I mean, color the bathtub water, they're going to fizz. They're going to put off a great fragrance and they're going to be super soothing to the skin with that um, mango butter oil or whatever oil you put in there. So. Incredible. And, you know, Sandra was saying, you know, while you were doing your presentation, 
that she puts um, a type of clay in hers also. Have you ever done that, Tricia? I haven't. Uh, I'm gonna look, Kay went clay. Okay, so I'm guessing that's for some detox. Who was that that said it? I think Sandra. Sandra yeah. This for a little detox, yeah. I mean, once you get your base, right, once you get it down that they're not expanding, and then you can start to play a little bit with the ingredients, I think. This recipe that I have is like that basic ingredients that you're gonna get a great bath bomb. And then like you guys, a more, a more experienced oilers, you can ex experiment with what you wanna put in there. But it's just so empowering to know what the ingredients are in there. And I've given these to people that are like obsessed with the lush bath bombs and everything else, and they love these. How are the shower melts different? Um, so, well, I make shower melts, which are more with a cornstarch, but I make, sh I make bath melts that are all oil. And I use a little, I have a little mold. Bath melts are like shea butter, mango butter, essential oils, coconut oil in a double boiler melted down put into a mold. So, oh, I have them actually right here. I can show you what they look like. So I actually do keep these in the fridge so that they don't melt down. And then when I need to take a bath, I just, so the, the top actually is ground lavender that I included in it. So these are little O's, doTERRA O's, and they smell absolutely amazing. Um, and they have all those oils in the double boiler and that's another recipe that I can share, but these are nice little gifts too. Wow, love it. Yes. Love it, we told you guys. You know, and, and I, that was a great tip with the, uh, the ball mold, you know, always overstuff your balls, guys. You always wanna make sure you Liz's do it. Liz's takeaway. You it's know, and I gotta, I just, I gotta remember to overstuff them, you know, yeah. because they think mine, you know, they just, you know. I have been, never tried to make a bath bomb. I did that one time, but I, I didn't think I used all the ingredients that Trisha said. I don't even remember. I think it, I so. just tried to use it with like the dishwasher <laughs> detergent recipe, oh, but that boy. didn't work. So. That, whoa. So anyways, now you guys know how, how to do yeah. it for real. You have the recipe and you've seen that Trisha has done it relatively easily. She's a pro. She's a pro. But guys, uh -huh. listen, you don't have to be a pro. You just got to start making stuff. Right. I oh, have yeah. made, I have made them. I didn't take them out immediately. So it was a little hard to get them out the mold, but <laughs> they do, they do work and they're lots of fun for the kids. So, um, oh, it's yay. been a big hit. Good. Little testimonial oh, right there on the spot. I love it. Love it. I love it. it. All right. I'm definitely going to order some fun molds. I don't know about the ball stuffing, but you know, <laughs> definitely the molds. I'm going to get some. I'll watch you. I, have, I only have tiny ones, but I'm going to do it. I'm, not, I'm over my fear now. Here we go. Rachel. I want to share a quick cleanup tip that it took me longer than I'd care to admit to learn. So the sunblock and some other DIY recipes, there's a bit of a water resistance to them, right? Remember oil and water don't mix. Mm -hmm. So here's my tip. This is the bowl I made it in. I just wiped it out with paper towel. Because if you just take your bowl that's filled with your sunblock, right? And you stick it under water, all that happens is your sink turns white and your bowl isn't clean at the end. And then if you try putting it in your dishwasher, it turns your whole dishwasher white. It's yep. awesome. That so, goes any DIY, this one too. DIY where you're double boiling and you're melting oils and whatever, take some paper towel, and wipe it out. And now once it's wiped out, I can use a soapy sponge and just like clean it. But you can see it basically looks clean and that's just from paper towel. So just save yourself the hassle of a white sink. Nice. It's all, and then it like never wants to go away. So. Wow. That's a really great tip. That is a pro That's tip. a really great tip. You know, and I mean, you know, when, I, when I was living in the woods, I used to clean things with dirt, you know? Yeah, I lived in the woods. Yeah, I did, Trisha, for many years. He cleans with dirt um, every summer. I Yeah, cleaned with dirt. I, I bet that would work too, but you probably don't want to clean with dirt because then your, your sink would have dirt in it. Why would you yeah. clean with dirt? It's a great scouring thing, oh, moving you know? On. Anyways, I can't. that's my level Speaking of domestic. Of dirt. Now, hold on. Oh, okay. That's it. I'm going to throw away my sunscreeny paper towels now. Love yeah, it. Yeah, go with Rachel's tip. Unless you're in the woods, then use dirt. 
dirt don't hurt. Just make sure it's clean dirt. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to removing dirt and makeup off of your face. Look at that the segue. Gorgeous Jennifer oh. Rambala. Look at her ear. She is so fancy. So fancy. Here we, I am in a t-shirt. We lovingly call her doTERRA Barbie. Looks like she's ready to hit a cantina. <laughs> because when she comes to convention and she puts on that gala dress, you're just like, whoa, when did Barbie get here? And she is absolutely stunning. Remember when she wore the gold dress? That little tight, little oh sparkle gold dress. Yep. And I was like, she chose wisely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're so excited. Thank yes. you, Jen, for helping Yay. us. This DIY. You're welcome. This All right, one's this gonna is be awesome. super useful. It is. This one is so refreshing. Okay, I'm gonna actually put it the recipe in the chat. So here you go. Um, make it super simple. So this is a recipe from Trisha. I need to acknowledge that one. Um, I remember her making it one time, and I was like, wow, I wonder if it actually works. And it freaking does. It is awesome. So I actually have some left over. So I'm gonna take those out, but I was so afraid to make them when I first started. I'll tell you the easiest way to start DIY is literally just getting the ingredients. <laughs> that is like the best tip I can give about DIY because when you start going crazy, looking at the recipe, all this stuff, it's so overwhelming. So I literally, I actually have all of the ingredients um, right in a Amazon like shopping list. And I find that to be simple. I'll just like send it out to somebody you know, wants to know exactly which which hazel I'm using or, you know what I mean? Like little thing or like the, I remember when Rachel with the DIY sunscreen, I was so overwhelmed with just where to get the ingredients because, you know, just all different. So she had like a whole list copied and pasted everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. Like I have everything. And then you just begin. So with this, you have the, obviously the ingredients right there. So the reason why we use distilled water is apparently because it helps so that no bacteria can then grow. So I actually don't always use distilled water so, because I usually run out of these kind of quickly, especially in the summer. You know, sometimes like the kids are dirty and they can just grab one of these, wipe down their whole face. It is, I'm telling you, super refreshing. So we're going to make it right now. So my advice, so just grab like a little thing like this, one cup of the water and then teaspoon of the virage. So I love this cleanser. It's super gentle and for the kids as well. This is a new one, so I might, okay, there we go. Let's go. And I have learned, don't mix it inside of the jar, do it in a separate one. So we're gonna pump that in, mix that all in. Then we do a teaspoon of fractionated coconut oil, all just going right in there. And you can also eye it. Like, don't be stressed about if you put too much or too little, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Um, and then we have our witch hazel. So putting that in. So just give it a nice little mix in there. And you'll see the soap will start to disperse, which is good. We don't need a bunch of bubbles. All right, and then time for the oils. I'm telling you, when, when you get the ingredients ready to go, this stuff, it just happens so fast. Oh, this one, I guess, is almost empty. So I'm gonna do, do you guys, that's the trick that Rachel did too. You just use the cap and just pop it off. I do it all the time. So I'm just gonna, I don't know how much is in here, but we'll just pour it in. <laughs> so that some tea tree. We have some lavender. Sophia actually loves making this with me. And then we have frankincense. The tea tree is so invigorating, by the way. I'll put a couple extra. And then my favorite part about this is the blue tansy. I love how it turns it blue. And it just has this incredible scent that I, I mean... I just love it. it. I mean, gosh, it's like just so sweet and amazing. So you want to put it in here first. And then we take our cotton rounds, whichever kind you have. And now the jar, you want like a four ounce jar. I actually happen to have, you could probably just use like a mason jar. I have one of, I had one of these, which was perfect. And it just kind of closes like that. Um, so what you want to do is can get a little bit tricky because you don't want to pour all the water in and then the cotton rounds, you kind of want to let them like soak up. So what I do is I pour a little bit of it in first, and then I just kind of take the cotton rounds, pop them in, 
I let them really like soak up the water. So you see how like pressing down because otherwise it'll just all overflow that was what happened the first time I did it. So now I can top it off a little bit more, let them really soak it up. And if you see, I've already used really not that much, so maybe like half a bag or so. Oh, that's a good idea, Trisha, too. I happen to have these. Maybe I will try that. Put up the, I would love the uh, link to that. And that's it. So well, just all the ingredients, we'll send all the links to everything on Amazon, on doTERRA. We'll send all of this up. So don't stress about the links. We'll compile them and get them all out to you. Along yeah. with and that's it. And the cotton rounds, will just soak them up. And then when you take them out, I just literally take it out, do a nice, nice little squeeze, and then just whatever. Oh my God, I love it. Sometimes I just do it like on a hot summer day when I'm like, I don't know, just sweaty. I mean, I like wipe down everything. I mean, your armpits, like I'm talking, and then do the detox with the mud mask. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, it's just like, you know, in between the boobs, like whatever you need, wherever you need to, like your bits and your <laughs> whatever, we're going to say it all, but you get the point. And <laughs> There it is. That's it. So simple. And like I said, for the kids too, it really, and it truly does take off your makeup. Cause I have like heavy duty mascara sometimes. And, um, I absolutely love it, but I must say it is, it's really, really refreshing. That is the, that's the best part about this. It's not like, you know, like when you're just removing makeup, you're just doing it, but this you're like, Oh, I feel like I just got out of a spa. Um, and a lot of the times you don't actually have, I mean, you can, I don't find that I have to really rinse off my whole entire face. Depends if you get like a soapy one, maybe a little bit, but enjoy. You're going to love it. That's awesome. awesome. And I'm so glad you wow. made that comment about, you know, wiping down the area in between your boobs, um, mm. with the, no, I don't brown. have any <laughs> <laughs> you know, boob sweat is real. And because I've already made inappropriate comments for everybody else's <laughs> DIY, I'm glad that I could find a way to do that with yours. You um, but, you know, I have to say, I love, I love these it. personal care DIYs because they are so easy. And these are things yeah. that many people, many of us use, right? Many of us like a bath bomb, but don't want all the chemicals in it. Many of us yes. use makeup remover, but don't, you know, know how to do this. And so now you do. Right. And I have to say, you know, once you open the door to all these DIYs, not just for your skin and beauty routines and for fun and pampering yourself, but you can actually find some relief in some really cool ways where you don't have to resort to going to, you know, your mm -hmm. local um, drugstore to buy lots of chemically laden stuff. Yeah. Right? And look how great they all make great gifts too. Absolutely. So I think for me, the reason I started because DIY stuff is because I was frustrated with things that I was using. My sisters would always come to the house and have those like oil of Olay makeup wipes. And my face would go immediately bright red and burn. But I like Jen, I wear mascara and eye makeup, like nothing takes it off. And honestly, I, I can use coconut oil, but it does clog the pores around my eyes. Whereas this makeup remover doesn't burn at all. And it's super soothing to the skin. So it's kind of like out of frustration why I started doing a lot of these DIYs, you know, because I just, my husband, his face wash was super expensive mm -hmm. and it was crappy. So I started making it for him. Like you just, at, at, from a place of like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. You start discovering and, and it's very empowering. It's very, it is easy once you start doing it. Mm -hmm. And I will say, this is a great opportunity to reuse some of your doTERRA bottles. So I just poured my extra sunblock into a body wash bottle. You can take the, the lifelong vitality bottles actually work great to put the makeup remover pads in. Wow. It's like the exact right size. Um, so you can shove, you can do that. You can use the, um, body butter jar is great to put the sunblock in as well if you especially if you want to make like a thicker one like more of that butter consistency so save your empty doTERRA bottles and you can find really awesome creatively another use for your llvs are to peel the, the label off 
and put scented bath, uh, bath salts in. So just Epsom salts with an oil of your choice, put a pretty label on it and a ribbon, and there's your bath salt gift for people. Yep. Molly made it by herself for her teacher for teacher appreciation this week, this year, and her teacher wrote the sweetest thank you note. She's like, this is so good. It smells amazing. I'm like, oh salt and oil yeah. and like a leftover vitamin bottle but <laughs> yay love that though reduce, so reuse recycle so creative yeah, so creative cute. absolutely so and Jen, with a cricket it probably would be so cute with the vinyl wait Jen yeah. just don't bring in rock salt for the teacher right <laughs> did you hear oh me oh my gosh that was so funny <laughs> look at this you guys she's doing oh it. the rock salt yeah here, I wanted to show you how easy it comes off. Like I'm doing this super gentle. And like, wow. It was a couple of yeah, removal process. Like, just to give you, just to show you, like I'm not actually like, you know, it's just super, I'm just doing it really, really gentle and that's it. And also look at how close I am with my eye. Like there's no burning or anything like that. That's amazing. You know, it really works very well. Fabulous. Yeah, there was this one time where Peter was like obsessed with like salt outside, like actual salt, like with melting the snow. And previously we had given a gift to the teacher, which was bath salts, right? Like some salts. And so then during the winter, like one day, Peter decides to go in. He's like, oh, I'm going to give this to my teacher. I'm like, no, you're gonna, that's so weird. Why would you bring her salt? Like, that's such a random thing. Well, he snuck it into his backpack and packaged it all cute for her and brought it in and gave her salts from outside on the street. And so she texts me later on and was like, oh my gosh, thank you for the bath salts. Like they smell so great. And I'm like, what bath salts? And I was like, oh my gosh. So I, I, you I, for you. I, texted, I was like, oh my God. I was like, no, like those are actually from the street. Like, holy crap. Like, I hope you didn't use them. You know, it was like the whole thing. And my like, little Peter was so excited. He was like, yeah, I got you some salts that you can use, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he was so proud of himself. So and then he was like, oh, that was so sweet, you know? Aww. Wow. Well, I'm glad that she Amazing. reached out to you. Thank That's God good. she said something. Woo. Yeah, no, those ladies, those were not, you know, dyed, hand dyed with food coloring. They were... You died by the plows. So. <laughs> I love how she still said they smelled good, though. I'm like, Jen, imagine, like, what What could they possibly smell like? <laughs> Maybe she likes road work. Maybe it was very earthy, you know? Maybe it was very earthy. <laughs> and it oh, is. Oh Jane, it is the thought that counts. That is so like, sweet. Oh gosh, Peter amazing. just knows that, he, you know, Jen's putting salt in the jar wow. and mixing oils. And he's like, I'm going to get my own salt. My mom won't give me any salt, so I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna give get my own salt for my teacher, my teacher. put it in a jar, and I'm gonna. You know, That's amazing. I love it though, but I do love that LLV bath salt um, recipe. I, I think do love we, that we will too. encourage That's our children really to do cool. that for teachers next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah, is a roller one. bottles and spray bottles. Yeah, they're getting rolled year. out though. I mean, they they've got a lot of roller <laughs> bottles. Lot of roller <laughs> bottles. <laughs> yeah, you gotta change it up. Switch up your DIYs a little. Well, this is perfect for us because you know, we need those ideas. Amazing. Anything anybody else wants to share or ask, here's your moment and then we're gonna wrap it up. Nothing, we stumped them. Well, seriously wow. guys. Makeup I is mean, removed. And look at that. Fantastic. And you know, there's a lot of questions um, about using oils around your eyes. And when you use them safely, like Jen is doing, it is totally fine. Um, you know, you don't, mm -hmm. and if you ever do get an essential oil in a sensitive area of your body, in your eye, you want to just simply remove it by using some carrier oil, like yep. coconut oil, right? And just wipe it out. Okay. Yeah. And it'll come right out like that. And if you don't want to use the makeup remover in the pre-done jar with the wipes, you can keep it in a spray bottle and just use it on a spray each time you want to do it. So. Oh, that's really good. These are also really good for like razor burn. Just FYI. Because they're like, you know, it has like the witch hazel in there. It has the, the FCO and then like those kind of healing oils. So if you, you know, 
Love it. For those of you who are moms of young kids, Rash. amazing at taking off face paint. So if your kids like go to a carnival or whatever, yes. they're face painted, it's amazing at getting it off and you don't have to, my kids always like cry and complain if you have to like scrub at their faces. So this takes it right off and that leaves their face like soft and it's not all red and gross. So yeah, or oily. Wow. Now, like some of those yeah. face removers are like so oily and you're just like, I mean, I look at how it just feels so refreshing. Like it's just great. She looks younger, right? I mean, I don't, I, I just don't even know why you bother wearing makeup because <laughs> look, you're just gorgeous. gorgeous. Anyways. So um, but yeah, I wish I knew that when Larkin had the Spider-Man face. And that was a whole disaster anyways, but we won't go there. Or when I was Zamora in Sleeping Beauty, I was the evil witch and I had red glitter here and all the way up here. Do you know that was 2008? I still find, not very often anymore, little pieces of red glitter in my ear sometimes. I don't. That's how much I use I didn't red even glitter. know her in 2008. And by the time we started dating... In like there was red 2010, glitter. we moved into each in, in with each other, and there was red glitter. And I have no idea where this glitter. Oh, came that's from, from my Anyways. show two years ago. Right, you brought your glitter. Thank you. Oh, no, Andrea, I wait, what did she say? Correctly. Well, now we know how to remove oh, everything. My oh no, God. who is that? Oh, oh Andrea. Love it. Sounds like it would be good to use. So I actually, I actually hate washing my face. I'll be totally like transparent. I hate it. It drives me crazy. I hate that the water splashes all over me or it gets like, I just, it drives me crazy. So this is, these are actually like really more my face wipes and FYI, if you get your eyebrows microbladed, like I did, you can't wash your face for about a month. So these were freaking perfect to be able to just get right around. You cannot get them wet. You have to do like a dry healing. So I just like completely did all around like everywhere. And it's, it's amazing for just cleaning your face. Mm. So, and I usually, I use like this exfoliating mitt thing too, but yeah, I once in a while do a nice splash if I'm like super hot or something, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Can you give teens, teens for teen skin? I think that would be great for teen skin because it has the tea tree in there. You know what I mean? The frankincense and lavender. That's literally the acne recipe. Yeah. Like I would, I would be curious to see if that like works on, you know, you could add a couple drops of HD clear into the mix. Also, if you really wanted to make it specific for like problem skin, you can honestly use any of the doTERRA cleansers, I've run out of Mirage and I've used the more cream-like essential um, skincare, um, the tube, you know what I'm talking about? And I, I just squirt that into my bowl and I use a whisk to really whisk, whisk it up. So it's not liquid like the Barrage, but it were, you can use any of the doTERRA cleansers in this in that recipe. I love yeah. the idea of the spray and then like a washcloth, you know what I mean? That's how I use mine as I keep it in a separate bottle and then. Yeah. Wow. There's so many ways. I have just learned so much. I, I am totally overloaded. I feel amazing. And I thank you girls for being with us here today and giving us all of your tips, your tricks, your wonderful DIY-ness. And thank you, all of you, for being with us and watching all of this DIY-ness. You made up a new word. I did. <laughs> happy. Yeah. Great. Lots of things happened today. <laughs> a day to remember. And if you're watching the recording and you have questions, ask. We'll answer. We yep. love answering questions. Right. Yep. We'll get the recording out hopefully tomorrow, maybe over the weekend, along with all the recipes and the ingredients and links with where to buy them. Super, Excellent. as they say over here. Wonderful. Super. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good night, friends. Good night. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye.